Hello everyone, it's uh, a delight for me to uh, have this opportunity to uh, discuss with you a language that I really love. I was born uh, in an Arabic speaking country. So let me greet you first and say Ahlan wa Sahlan. Why am I saying that? Because that's the way we greet people in Arabic. Ahlan wa Sahlan. And here in uh, this course, I want to introduce you to the basics of Arabic and we will take it step by step. But I'm telling you from the start here that my goal is to convince you that Arabic is so cool and Arabic is a wonderful language and you will speak Arabic by the end of this course um, and that's a hope but I also saw many people who, do, who, who did this through my courses. So let's uh, go right ahead and just uh, take um, the first lesson as we discuss the alphabet. In Arabic we have 20 letters of the alphabet. Let's see the screen as I write for you the 28 letters and then I, as I'm writing, I will pronounce and actually I will transliterate. Why am I going to transliterate? To help you connect with the letter in your language, in English. So, here we go. First, the first letter is Alif, just like this. This is Alif, the first letter in Arabic. And then we have the second letter is Ba. Repeat, Ba. And it is just like a B. The first letter Alif is, let's consider it now, it's a bit complicated, but let's consider it now as an A. And then we have a similar letter like the Ba, it's called with two dots on top of it. So you begin with Aleph, repeat after me, Aleph, Ba, Ta, Ta is like a T. So there is a letter in Arabic that corresponds with the English T, like table. And then we have another letter that is actually similar, but with three dots above it. And this is like TH, and it's called THE. THE. It's like thank you, thank you. So these three letters look like each other, but what distinguish them from each other is the dots. One underneath, two above, and three above. By the way, good news. We begin always with good news. These are very distinct as letters in Arabic, so you will, not conf you will not feel confused so that there are some letters that are similar to the th and have three dots above. No, this is a letter, th, and there is no other letter in Arabic that looks like that. So we have alif, ba, ta, th, and then we have jim. You see here, I will erase it and write it again so that you write after me. It's like this. This is like a J. J. Jim. It's called Jim. Jim. Like George. J. A similar letter without a dot that is a very unique letter to Arabic. It's called ha. Ha. I will come to this in a minute, but it's a ha from the throat. Ha. Mid. Middle throat. Ha. Ha. One very famous word in Arabic. Habibi. Habibi. Everyone in the Arab world call the other like buddy. It's Habibi. Habibi. So it's a ha. And I will come to this in a second, but let me give you the one after this, and it is 
Khe. You need to practice your German here. Bach. Khe. 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 Khe is a KH. Ha is an H with this dot underneath. Why do we add this dot underneath? Because it's a guttural letter. So I have Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, J, Ha. Repeat. Ha. From the mid of your throat. Ha. And then Kha. That's from the up, upper. You can remember Kha is from the upper throat because it has a dot on top. So I have Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha. Jim, ha, ha, and then we have del, it's like an angle, and then del, del is a D, and del is DH. Del, del is like thou, though, the. Del, del. And then I have two similar letters. You notice that del and del are similar with only one dot on top. So, quickly repeat. Alif, ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, kha, jim, ha, Every time you will pronounce it in the beginning, you will feel like it switches to a kh. You need to get it from the mid of your throat. And always think of Habibi. So, Jim, Ha, Kha, Del, Del, and then we have two letters look like each other. Ra, that's an R. Ra, Ra, Ra. And in Arabic, sometimes we roll. Ra, repeat, Ra. And then, Zain, just like the Ra with a dot. And that's like the Z. So you have Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kha, Del, Del, Ra, Zain. How about two more letters similar? Look like each other. So I have Ra and Zain, then I have Seen, like three, like this. Let me write it again slowly here for you. It's like this, like a little W in English, but seen. And similar one is sheen. If you studied Hebrew, these are similar to the Hebrew letters. So seen, sheen, seen is an S, and sheen is an SH. Sin, sheen, sin, sheen. How about another pair? Look like each other with just a little dot on top of it. So sin, sheen, and then I have sod. Ah, oh, that's a complicated one. Not that really complicated. Let me do it again slowly here. You're doing like small, like curve here and then like this. And the other one is similar but with a dot. So this is called sod, sod. And this is not s. Remember we have seen s. This is sod, a bit emphatic. That's why when we transliterate it, we say it's an s with a dot underneath. It's emphatic. Sod. You don't have similar letter in English. So what would you do? You need to listen. Every letter that is unique to Arabic, you need to listen to it and practice it. That's why after I finish the 28 letters, I will repeat the letters for you so that you can memorize them. So Sod, Dod, and Dod is a D, but with an emphatic, it's an also emphatic. So it's not like the del. We studied the del earlier. This is dod. Repeat dod. Very unique to Arabic. There is no language that we know of that has this letter, do. Do. Your tongue is 
completely filling the upper part of your mouth. Do, do, dod, dod. So, sod, sod, a bit emphatic, dod, dod, and then we have ta, that's also different, it's, it's not a T, it's a ta, 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 ta. That's why we say it's a T with a dot underneath. So it is not like the ta, the third letter in the alphabet. It is actually more emphatic. So yeah, by now we understand that Arabic has some emphatic letters. Actually, we have five emphatic letters. On this, we will come to this soon. So I have ta and a similar one with a dot, and we call it za. Za, it is not z, not like zain, z. It is za, again, emphatic. So by now, I know that when the letter is emphatic, we add a dot, or when it's guttural. Ta, za, and then the most beautiful letter in Arabic. It's called Ain. Ain. This is from your throat completely. And it is very difficult for English speakers, but I'm telling you, if you just listen to it often, you will be very much professional in the Ain. 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 It's from the deep inside your throat. Ah, it's actually lower than the other ones, like kh. Kh is on top here. Ha, ha is like friction, little friction in the throat. And as for ayn, it is deep throat. Ah, ah. In fact, some people say that ayn, as a unique letter in Arabic, uses a muscle in your throat that is only used when you vomit. Anyway, we don't want you to, to do that, but Ain. That's why some people actually try to say it's Ain, Ain. Try your very best, Ain. Ah, Ain. So, Ain, similar one is Ghin. And Ain is actually, we use a little bit of a C. You will see this in um, our writing, transliteration. Ghin is like a G-H. G. Ghali. G. Ghali. Even in French, they have this G sometimes, but Ghali. G. G. So, Ain, Ghin, and then we have two pairs. I would say fa and then qaf. They look like each other, fa and qaf. Fa and qaf. See here how I will write this? I will write it a little bit bigger so that you can see. See, a little bit here and this. That's a fa. If I add two dots, then it's a qaf. Fa is an F. Qaf is, an, is a Q. So this is the transliteration we use usually with the Fa and Qaf. So Fa is like F, F, regular F. Qaf is a Q. If you look at these two, you will feel like they are exactly identical, although one with one dot and the other is with two dots. Yes, but if you want to be really accurate, the Fa is a bit flat. And the cough is a bit like compact. And that's what is being seen here on the screen. Now, fa, cough. So let's repeat quickly. Alif, ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, kha, del, del, ra, zin, sin, shin, sod, dod, ta, za, ain, ghin, fa, cough. Why am I repeating it? Because you need to repeat it to learn it. And you need to learn it well and learn it by heart. Fa, qaf. Then we have a letter that is kaf. It's called the kaf. That's like a K. Kaf, kaf, 
you need a letter in Arabic that represents the K, Kaf, and it has, it's like an angle here, see, on the screen, you have an angle, like an angle, this way, angle, and then it has like a little thing inside that we call Hamza, I will discuss this with you next session, but it's like this, Kaf, okay, let me take this away, Kaf, and we need another letter here that a bit look, looks like Kaf, but it's different, it's Lam, which is an L, Lam, 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 so Kaf, Lam, and then I have another letter that is called the Meme, see how did I, I did that, it's an M, Meme, repeat Meme, 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 simple, and it's like a little circle, and then you do this, Meme. So, Kaf, Lam, Meme, and I need another letter to tell me about Noon. That's an N. Noon. Noon. Very important letter. We'll use it a lot. Noon. What is that? It's like a small circle with a dot in, in, inside. There is no letter in the Arabic alphabet that has one dot on a circle like noon. What do I say? What, what, why am I saying this? Because if you look at the noon, you will know wherever it appears in a word. So this is something that like a good news for you. So meme noon, and then we have ha, that's an H. Ha, how did you write the ha? I will write it slowly. Look at the screen. You go like this. Another one. That's a hat. And then erase that. Okay. And then we have almost, we are done with the alphabet. Ha. Wow. A fascinating letter. Wow. 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 It is either W or like an O O or a U but stretched. Did you see here? A U stretched on the screen. A U stretched. So why is this letter sometimes pronounced as W and the other time is like O W and the other time is like O O or U stretched because this letter is either consonant or vowel. On this, we'll come to this soon. The same is to be said about the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's either Y or a long I meaning E, E, like E, E. So the letter Y and the letter Yeah can either be consonant or vowel. If it's consonant, it has a pronunciation. If it's vowel, it has another. So let's repeat quickly the alphabet. That's the alphabet. We're done with the bulk of it. So I have Alif, look at the screen. Alif, B, T, Th, and the B, T, Th look like each other. Let's continue. Jim, Ha, Kha. Three letter, letters look like each other, but the dot makes a difference. Jim, Ha, Kha. And then we have two letters look like each other. Del, Del. And then another. Ra, Zin. Sin, Sheen. Then two emphatic. Sod, 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 dod, dod. And then two emphatic more. Ta, za, ta, za. Then a guttural. Ain, ain, ain. 
Rin, rin, that's from your throat as well. Rin. And then, simple one, fa, f, fa, kaf, 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 lam, lam, mim, mim, noon, noon. And then we have ha, which is h, ha. Wow, yeah. This is the alphabet in Arabic. So, are we done? Uh, not really. Very quickly. These are the letters in Arabic that are single on their own. But in Arabic, we connect letters together. So, what will happen if we connect the letter together? Well, quickly, we will connect the letters together. So, if you connect the letters together, you have always three possibilities. The Arabic letter could be initial or in the middle or at the end of a word, right? So, what would happen if Aleph is at the beginning or in the middle or at the end? Let me write this to you. If Aleph begins the word, then it is like this. And note, Aleph does not connect with the following letter. So, what if Aleph is in the middle? So, there is a letter before it, and then it becomes like this. What if Aleph at the end of a word? It will be like this. Similar. So, initial, medial, and final. That's it. Now, I know that I have three letters that look like each other from the previous discussion. Ba, ta, tha. They look like each other. So, what I would say about one of them will apply on the others. So, what is the case if ba is in the beginning of a word? So it will be like this. If it's in the middle, so there is a letter here, and then you have the ba. What about the end? It will be like this. Usually, the final form the final form of a letter is similar to the letter on its own. So if I say this, look at this screen here. If I say this about the ba, it will be similar to if I say this about the ta, just to put two dots here or two dots here. You see the point here or two dots here. So now let's delete that. And actually, the same will apply if it's a fa. What is the next? So I can say that ba, ta, tha will look, will operate the same. Now the next is jim. If it's at the beginning, it will be like this. In the middle is like this. Or at the end, it will be similar to the letter on its own, like this. What I say about jim is applicable on ha and kha. What I say about the dal is going to apply on the dal. So, if it's in the beginning, it's going to be on its own, connected to a previous letter, meaning it's in the middle, it will be like dal, or at the end, it will be like this, same angle. But the point is, del is like alif. Do not connect with the following letter. We have six letters in Arabic that do not connect with the following letter. Del applies to del and actually applies to ra and zain. So ra will be like this and connected to a previous letter or at the end. 
What else? We have seen and sheen. Seen is like this. You see the screen. Seen at the beginning of a word. In the middle, it's like this. At the end, you return to the full letter. That's the rule. And if I say this about seen, it will apply on sheen as well. Now, what I said about seen and sheen is actually going to apply on sod and dod. Why? Because sod is similar in form. The form is similar. And here. And what I said about sod is going to apply also on dod. Ain. In the middle, it will be like this. At the end, I will return to the full letter. What about Ghin? Following like Ain, because they, say, they have the same shape. So what I say about one is applicable on the other. We're approaching the end here. What about the Fa? Fa is like this. If it's in the middle, if it's at the end, and what I say about fa applies on qaf. Why? Because they look like each other. What about kaf? This is a tricky one. Pay attention here, okay? Kaf at the beginning is going to be like this. Where is the something in, inside? It's not appearing when it's in the beginning. When it's in the middle, it's going to take the same shape. It will not have the same symbol, which I call the Hamza, which is in, inside. If it's at the end, then yes, we will restore the original, which is just the letter on its own. Same with lamb. Lamb is here. Lamb is here. If it's in the middle or lamb at the end, I will restore the final form. Meme at the beginning. Meme in the middle. And then at the end, I restore the letter on its own. Noon. I have noon at the beginning. You see how noon will follow the same pattern as in ba and ta and tha. Why? Because it's like a circle. And the dots will identify whether this is ba or ta or tha or noon. So noon in the beginning of a word is like this. In the middle is here. And then... If it's at the end, I will restore the shape. Ha, in the beginning, in the middle. At the end is a bit tricky. It becomes like this. Pay attention here. Pay attention here. By the way, if it's not connected, it will be just a little like zero, like this. And we will see this in words as we go ahead, as we go forward with our class. Now, wow does not connect with the following letter. So I have wow. Wow doesn't connect with the following, but it connects with a previous one. And then wow. Finally, yeah is at the beginning, two dots in the middle. And then finally, it's like a short yet similar to what we already used earlier. So this is how the alphabet connects. And this ends our first session. I hope you practice Arabic well and you follow the alphabet and repeat it because surprise, surprise, if this, these 28 letters form the alphabet in Arabic, that's all what you need to know initially to begin forming words. However, 
We have a little um, surprise for you in the next session as I'm going to tell you about some more letters that are found in Arabic, but they are not part of the alphabet. Stay tuned. I see you next.